All right, shalom. <coughs> oh, whoa, shalom. Salam to not, and I is a link. This is to get I and I up to speed. Um, yeah, I and I need to get up to speed. You know, the day is, you know, the day is, is, the day is, is dawning. A new day is dawning. But we, the ones lost but now found bait to Israel, we have to get our I and I Father's house in order. We have to get I and I heads in our hearts in order. And it begins with education. Education is the key. And that which we have done already as far as that which with, which the society has published, the videos, the teachings dealing with the related but various um, subject matter, consider that as, as prologue. We've posted a couple of vids, um, a few, uh, not a couple, but several videos that had disciple or discipleship within its title. Those particular videos, yes, those are discipleship videos, but this series and this series of videos that we want to do now should be considered as as more of the, like on the official level in the sense of we want to go to the, the foundation, to get to the foundation, all right, concerning discipleship and some really need to know and, and to meditate upon these these particular elements. That means to to think about, but think about in the sense, for example, in the scripture it speaks on meditate. We find it in Joshua 1 and 8, and we also find it within, um, I think it's 1 Timothy chapter 4, 4 and 15 or so, where it speaks about meditate. One thing we'll find about meditate, some say meditation is defined as 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 stilling the mind, or some would say focusing the mind. But if we get to the scripture, the holy scriptures, we find meditation within that context. And there's a secular way and a, and a so-called spiritualistic way out in the world among those who are in the world who have not received the good news of our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach where meditation goes into various different other sort of um, spiritual speculations. So we're not working with that. As the scripture says, I think it's 119, 130, the entrance of thy word giveth light, giveth illuminations, the entrance of the word, the logic, the reality. Now, there's a speech I was looking for, and... Um, I don't think I I was able to find it, but no doubt um, it's on it's on the the drive. But I thought that was printed or was in a book or perhaps it's in some of the books to be published. But you you're familiar with the speech where His Majesty is speaking about how um, regardless of whatever language the word is written in, you understand, or, or, or has been translated, the word remains one and the same. And he speaks about, um, no doubt you recall and remember of Philip baptizing the Ethiopian eunuch and how he was one of the first Ethiopians on record to follow the way of Christ. And then he also touches on um, Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter, um, I think it's 12, where he says, come unto me. Let's get our our tools right here. Mm -hmm. Where he says, come unto me. Let's see if it's chapter 12. He says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Right? And are heavy laden. Actually, it was, it was 11. It was 11, right? It was 11. Yeah, it was chapter 11. My bad. You know, sometimes you're thinking something. I was thinking 11, 11. 11 came up, and then then I'll say, well, I know 13 begins with the parables. So it's, sometimes you have to go with that thought still. I'm, I'm just going to leave this leave this in there. You have to go with that thought and, and follow through with that thought. Um, so I said 12. 12 is actually where... 
at the end of 12, he speaks about who is a brother. You understand? He speaks about who is a brother. When you look at Matthew, Matthew is an excellent, that's in the Schofield Reference Bible. It's an excellent um, discipleship um, study for any newcomer, any Adis, Adis met a newcomer in Christ, which the Bible would define also as a, quote, a novice. And Hoaria uh, Paulos, he gives certain he gives certain um, instructions to his disciple um, his disciple Timothy concerning this, and this is something that we have to be very very cautious of. This is this is a, a little bit of the intro to this particular series right here. We're gonna just follow the, the spirit and 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 touch on a couple of points. Um, First Timothy chapter three, where it speaks of the qualification of elders and deacons. Um, uh, verse uh, uh, six, where it says, not a novice, least being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil of Diablos. Cursed be he. Moreover, he must have a good report of them that are without, least he fall into reproach and the sneer of Diablos. Cursed be he. Now, it's interesting because this is a, 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 a small, a, 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 a small excerpt, but it, it's in the logic of the bigger context. So, so although this is just one area we're touching on a newcomer or or a um, a novice, as King James, the King James version translates it, it shows that there are there are stages, there are degrees. Mm -hmm. There are stages, there are degrees. There are steps that must be taken. Now, many Christians. Well, brothers and sisters that come to Christ, looking for I and I markers, uh, many who come to Christ are told many things. And this is not to, um, we, we, we want to avoid uh, gener generalizations. Give me, give me one moment, brothers and sisters. One moment. We want to avoid gener generalizations. Let us do all. In our power to avoid generalizations. We don't want to. We don't want to generalize and say like all oh, Christian churches, so forth and so on. Even though there's a prevailing counterfeit um, doctrine that has prevailed and deceived much of the world, and the humanity of Christ has been blasphemed, and the deity of Christ has been blasphemed. The humanity, his Ethiopianness, you understand, and the fact that the the true Jews of the Scripture are what we would call the Afro, you understand, or the Aperu, Aferu, Afro Shemitic people, you understand. So there is a relation to what we call black. But we're going to touch on also this this subject matter that has has really refocused our attention on the prerequisites, and this is why I want to do this particular teaching here, um, let's get this right here, do this particular teaching here, and we want to call this the great invitation. The great invitation is extended to all. The great invitation extended to all. And um, we want to touch on this particular teaching, then after this we want to touch on the, the, the importance of the the parables make a mention also on 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 study uh, we all, we already know what the scripture says concerning study and let's just go to Timothy once again and touch on study why is study so important because many are going out there on so called believe and it's not even believe within the good and the proper context even if one doesn't know um, Hebrew or if one doesn't know um, Greek, 
you see what I'm saying, like many of our ancestors and, and those before us among so-called um, Negroes, Blacks, and Coloreds, the Smiths, the Jones, the Johnsons, did not have the opportunity that we have for education and to fact check, you know what I'm saying, fact check that which we have um, 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 received previously and, and, and find out what is right and exact, what is, what is true and what is real, what is, what is verifiable, what is veritas, you know what I'm saying, what is, what is the truth, because it says, ye shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Our black Lord and Savior, Shua HaMoshia, says, Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set us free. So we look into the world, and we look around, and we see what's going on. And there's, 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 as, as freedom is what most of us think it is. You know, think we have to go check that out. But if freedom is what we think it is, we, we see the total opposite of so-called true freedom. And, of course, there are reasons for that, and there's also a season for that, and we happen to be in the ending of this season. You understand the ending of this season, what some call the so-called end of the world, the end of seclorum, the end of the um, uh, Gentile world domination. You see what I'm saying? The Gentile. Now, who are the Gentiles? The Gentiles are the, the white Western um, Europeans are the Gentiles and their, and their um, uh, descendants who have come over to this new world. And all of this is in fulfillment of, of, of Scripture. You see what I'm saying? And it's no accident that we are where we are at and we are where we find ourselves. But here's the question. Have you found yourself? Have you truly found yourself in the light, which means the illumination of the truth of this word. So you can look at this word, you know what I'm saying, and with, with, with knowledge, you know what I'm saying, with knowing. You see, with knowing, um, well, let's deal with this right here. With knowing is something called con, right, science, right, conscience means with Right? Knowledge. Right? Conscience means with knowledge. Now, this is not what we wanted to address in this particular teaching, but in, in going with the Spirit and in the Spirit, you understand? Because sometimes we will we'll begin to speak and we already say, okay, we want to teach this, I want to touch on this, but as we're beginning to articulate, you understand, and listening to that small, still voice, Here's where we're at. So this that with knowing or conscience, right? Conscience means with knowing. So with, with clear conscience and with a good conscience, be able to recognize what you're seeing and not being so-called um, um, condemnatory or overly desirous to be content, like fire burn everything, like just loose fire, because we touched on, on that in a previous teaching, the loose fire. So we as Rastafari, and, and I'm, I'm going to speak this to the Rastafari brethren and sisterin, you understand, because we are of the elect. We may not think that we are of the elect. Some might not think so. You understand, or, or things in time may make you feel you know, for a moment, like, if we are, then how come such and such and such and so forth and so on? Others may not think so, because they say, what good can come from Rastafari? You, you always, they look at us as, you know, dreadlock, um, you know, wearing uh, weed, so-called weed smoking, or pot smoking, reggae music listening, amon, 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 so forth and so on. But, but, but you see... That's all part of the deception, the lies and the deception. But if one would come and study the truth and find the truth for themselves, they will recognize with knowledge, with a good knowledge, a clear conscience, you see, with knowing. So science, right, science, understand this, science right here, this word science means knowledge. 
right? And it's a process now of 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 um bringing that out. You see, it's not putting so-called. A lot of people think it means putting, like education means putting something in. No, it's drawing it out. You know what I'm saying? It's giving ones the the tools, right? The the the, the tools and teaching ones the principles as well as the processes and giving ones the tools. Let's understand this. So we need to know in the education, right? So 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 his Majesty teaches us that education, right? Education, right, is education is the key. Right? He tells that education is the key. So we need to understand the what? The principles, right? The principles, right? We need to understand the principles, right? The divine principles. You over this. And for lack of a better word, but this is a good word, the principles are the, the divine laws. You understand? The laws. As above, so below. You understand? When we pray, you understand when we pray the Our Father prayer, Abuna Zebe Samayat or Abatachin Hoy. You understand? You Besamayat Yemitnor Abatachin Hoy. What do we ask for? What is what is what is the petition that says, Thy will be done on earth as it is <coughs> in heaven? In the Samayat, really in the heavens. So how do we know what his will is? Where will we get the knowledge? You understand? Where will we get that knowledge? So education is is is, is the key because education it draws is, is drawing out. You see, so when we hear about this education argument, when we hear that America is falling behind on education, when we see what's happening within society, overstand even the moral decay, you understand, the, the, this great moral decay and apathy that's going on. Um, we can look at the economics, and all of it is connected. All of it is interconnected. So where do we start? We've got to start with I and I selves. You understand, I and I have to start with I and I selves. It's almost like the Michael Jackson song, looking at the man, in the mirror, you understand, in the mirror. And, and, and the word mirror, I'm thinking about the tabernacle and how the woman donated their mirrors and how that was beaten to the laver, to make the laver for, for the, the, the basin, the wash basin for the priests, you understand, so that the priests could, could wash. And um, I remember hearing once teach on that, so I, I don't recall exactly who, but I remember the teaching. I remember the teaching that it was so, it, it, because the mirror, you know, the mirrors had like a reflection, and it was so clear that, and, and, and if you look at the position of, 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 of the laver in the tabernacle, and seeing that the tabernacle in, in form and in type is a type of the Mashiach, is a type of the Mashiach. It's a type of Christos, it's a type of the anointed, yet the Kabawan. In, 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 in type, so it's, 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 it was to educate, it was to teach. So now we look at the Old Testament, the tabernacle, we see, the, we see that laver, and it was made from the, the daughters of Israel, um, the, the, the daughters who were willing hearted, they, they donated their mirrors. Right, they donated the mirrors, and some say these mirrors were like ankh type mirrors. Um, because remember, they came out of Egypt, and that was the prevailing culture. Just like today, we're in a Western or so called American culture that's based on a Western white Eurocentric kind of model coming out of England, and, and much of the world has been influenced by that culture. So, even in coming out and the exodus and finding home, we still have this cultural, you know, this, this influence, you know what I'm saying, of society. But those Israelites were 
even the woman donating their ark type mirrors or mirrors for the tabernacle when the priests went into the 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 holy place the tent they were able to look into as they washed and and that washing is a symbol of baptizing you know what I'm saying it's symbolic of baptizing remember the water on a certain level is water is like half spiritual if you look at it you know even the h2o since the ear you know what I'm saying is a spiritus but then it also has like the hydrogen but water is is a type of cleansing the word is also connected with water on a certain level so we have to understand as as in, in this symbolic logic and try to see well what is it pointing to because there's some things that are so great in, that seem to be inexplicable in uh, not to be uttered can't be uttered you know like a feeling or a vibe or sometimes you can't find the words you know what I'm saying but if you work on it you might be able to find some type of um, symbolic logic or expression so this is what we have in the scripture so it's really science because remember scientia and now in the in the Greek this is gnosis or gnosis right this is gnosis in, in the Greek science equals knowledge you see so education is the key first we learn the principles now the principles in a kind of a codified way would be contained in what we know as law which is Torah which points out also why do we have this um, focus on 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 remembering the senbet you understand know and keeping it set apart and studying the scriptures you understand know and keeping to the Moedim of Elohim and learning about these things so that we can do these things because Christ teaches us in John I think 7 and 17 that the one who does it will know you see the one who does it John 7 and 17 we're gonna get into this teaching but this is this is just to build on this particular foundation like we said what we've posted and published before could be considered in a sense orientation for this particular level of discipleship you understand as a prologue for this particular level of discipleship here we're seeking to go into some of the the basic teachings that would be presented if we were able to say fellowship or if another were to teach one these are some of the key things they need to first of all overstand themselves you understand and also do because when you do it you understand you get to know it so in John 7:17, 7, here's here's what Yeshua, here's what Adoni Gita says. This is if any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine. The doctrine is the Timherit, is the teaching, and, and in the kind of a Hebraic sense, the Timherit, the teaching would be the Talmud. You're know saying the Talmud. See, a lot of y'all, when you hear things like Talmud and Kabbalah, y'all think it's a a a a a a book in a sense, like like some secret kind of scripture or something like that. You know, when one hears the Talmud of the Jews, but the Talmud means the doctrine. See, Talmud equals doctrine. So it is it is um, Christ here who says he says um, my doctrine is not mine but his that sent me so Yeshua the son the Bain Ha Elohim was saying that his doctrine his teaching his Talmud was not his but it was he who had sent him and we know he is the son so it was his father Abba Abba Kedus Kedus Abba Tachin's doctrine or teaching which we know coming out of Egypt would be the Ma'at or the two truths you understand what's known as the two truths which are clearly evident if one were initiated if one began you see initiation means to begin to initiate an activity to begin an activity so different ones we may add on different things in different but when you get down to the word 
you know what I'm saying, and the true doctrine. So he's saying that if any man will do his will, so we're coming to this word will. We keep hearing about will. You understand know will. I, a lot of y'all have been, you know, watching vids and, and studying and learning certain things about the New World Order and the secret societies and, and, and one like um, Crowley and so, the Crow, so forth and so on, talking about the law of Thelema, you understand, know um, do what thou wilt shall be blah, blah, blah. You understand? But it's about will. So we have to understand that will, make a note of that word, will. Okay, he says, if any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. So one will, will be able to separate the true from the false. You understand? Because we really don't know until we go through that process. So the second word right here is, is process, right? The process, the process is very, very important. The process is the key. So we have, we have the principles, you understand? And then we have the process. Now, why is the process so very important? Because we can learn things, you know, learn about things, yeah, but if we don't know the procedure, you understand the procedure, because we're seeking to organize to do John's will, you understand, to organize to do what we are supposed to do, living in the covenant, you see, living within the contract, you know, and the birthright is, is, is the key, you understand, the birthright is the key, because in a sense, being born in this world, this world of sin, we were born, and it was, we were born, but the birthright became a birth wrong, and this is why Christ says, Yeshua, the black Moshia, the black Messiah says, ye must be born again from above. So once again, this connection with the Samayat, this connection with the heavens, you know what I'm saying? This connection with, with will. So we begin to see how it all how it all right here um, comes together. So we have the principles, you know what I'm saying? And we have the process. These, this, this right here is key. The principles and the process. And this is what we want to go over right here. The, the, the principles, some may say king suppose we over that, but let's get to the real etymology of the word. You know what I'm saying? Let's get to the real crux of the matter. The principles and the process or the procedure. You know what I'm saying? And then we will what? We will know. You know what I'm saying? Then we will know. So we have knowledge. Education is that key. But in order to know it, see, 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 knowing it is not just being able to quote off, say, certain facts or certain scripture, but to know it in a real and a living way. You know what I'm saying? In other words, to be able to actualize it. You know what I'm saying? To be able to live within that. Now, we want to speak about the birthright, and we've touched on briefly, but not really squarely just yet. We haven't really squared on it. We just laid down some of the basic elementals building up to it while also addressing other matters that have come to I and I or whether we have read or heard ones or been in discussions and some might have made certain points about certain things or there might be certain prevailing ideas that don't square, you understand, that don't square with the King of Kings and his Christ. So we have to address those in some of the videos and also there's, there's others that we still have to address. So this, this particular teaching that we're seeking to do right here, originally we wanted to call it the Great Invitation, Extend It to All. And immediately it reminds me of His Majesty's um, speech. I don't know if that's an undated speech, but His Majesty's speech where he says, um, he quotes Christ where he says, Come to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And his imperial majesty, Abba Kedus, Kedus Abba he says, Who can resist an invitation so full of compassion? 
who can resist it? So the first thing is that invitation. So we are putting out that invitation. We're going to teach on the invitation. You know what I'm saying? And this will be like, um, say, almost like ground zero in a sense, because if you understand this, then one will better understand discipleship and one's um, responsibility. You see, each of us has a, 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 an individual responsibility. You understand? An individual responsibility to become equipped, to become knowledgeable so we can be active. Come on, we say the Rastafari is a movement. Well, where is the movement? I mean, we know Rastafari is a movement, you understand? Know but where is the real movement? The movement has come to a point in a state of semi inertia. You understand? Know There's not really that movement as we can see historically in Rastafari. There has been. You understand? Know and it comes to, to once again the doctrine. You understand? Know what is the doctrine? You understand? Know what is the true doctrine, the true teaching? of his imperial majesty. What is the true teaching? And, and, and then present evidence. We had to present that evidence. And, and one now receiving that, taking note of that, go and find the truth for yourself. Check out, well, he said such and such. Let me check out and, and see what I find. You know what I'm saying? Because then as a corporate, you see the church, when we speak about church, church is a a corporate person. You understand? Remember, all this is going to kind of connect right here with law. You understand? And even the law, you understand, that, that governs where we're at, but we don't have the knowledge of the law. You see, we hear the church, um, especially the black church, says we're free of the law. Right? So we're free. Jesus has made us free of the law. And that particular teaching, you know what I'm saying, is, is distorted of context. And in light of the scripture, what Yeshua actually says and what the Bible truly says is a false doctrine. And so one can ignore that and say, okay, I don't agree with you. You know, you can ignore it, but you can't ignore the consequences. And we can see the consequences among the lost sheep for such ignorance. Yovas for such ignorance among the Negroes, blacks, and coloreds. Because, see, Negroes, blacks, and coloreds, they don't have any birthright. They've lost that birthright. You know what I'm saying? And th therefore, they are not in laws, but they are outlaws. And when you see how this whole system that we're in in this present time right now and the things that are happening through the mischief in the law, you know, the scriptures say that a time will come when they will seek to change laws and time. You see, there are laws that govern this whole universe, laws that govern you and me, our so-called involuntary functions. It all connects with law. But in order to gain a knowledge of it, you know what I'm saying, one must be in the science of it because we are to be the knowers and if we are knowers and knowledge is science, then we are scientists. In other words, it's to approach it, you understand, with that discipline. You see, once again, discipline, discipleship. To approach it with that sort of discipline, as well as diligence. As well as, this is very, very important because everything that is in the vision of the King of Kings and his Christ for us, you understand? It requires that we become prepared. And in that preparation is to become knowledgeable. You understand? To know these things. You understand? To know these things and to actualize them. You understand? And then to do them. But first we have to get into our proper person. In our propria persona su juris. We have to be, we have to know ourselves. Who are we? Where are we from? How do we get here? You know, and some of the questions that are some basic discipleship questions. Who are we? You know, what I'm they say we're, we're Negroes, but there's no place called, I mean, yeah, we saw on a map Negro land, but that was just, you know, 
that's the fictional way the white man at that time wanted to do it on the map. But, but those people in Africa don't identify themselves as Negro land. So we know that they put that there for a reason. But anyway, they say we're Negroes, we're, we're blacks. Now, there's a whole legal context to, to black and white. Black and white are not nationalities. You see, nationality is very, very important. So when you start to understand that, you'll recognize why Amos 9 and 7, where it says, Aren't you like the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? And when you understand the backstory on that, that the children of Israel will go astray from the law or the principles, you understand, know that made them, in that sense, the landlords, you understand, know for their own land, their own territory. Some may say, well, America and, and the West is, is ours because we've been here so long. We already touched on this before, and others have already touched on it. But we recognize, you know what I'm saying, that we came in that trans-Ethiopic Ocean passage or that Holocaust, you know what I'm saying, which even the United Nations says is one of the greatest atrocities in human history because even though they say, forget about slavery and, and what happened, that's all past. But the consequences are still here. You understand? And we cannot change what is, what, what is bad and worse now to something better unless we recognize, well, the cause and effect. And law teaches us the relationship of cause and effect. Now, I'm saying this just to remind ones that this connects with the Torah teaching, the teaching on the Torah. Now, when we get into discipleship, in a sense, it would seem like for so much focus on the Old Testament scriptures, discipleship incorporates or it, 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 it initiates a, a deeper, in a sense, New Testament study. But you need that foundation, you see. And this is why Christ said to his own disciples, the, the very first of the disciples, he said to them, um, 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 the 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 study of the, the law of Moses, you know what I'm saying? He taught out of those books, you know what I'm saying? The uh, law of Moses, the Psalms of David, and all the prophets, the things concerning him. Because they were thinking, like a lot of us think, well, you know, when we're going to come out of this, you know, when we're going to come out of this so-called second class or no class, so-called citizen or, you know, you know, come out of this, this way of living that so many folks come to take as being normal. You know, they take this so-called way of life as being normal, and, and they're trying to deny or put blinders on and not really see the, the signs, the manifestation like that so-called proverbial handwriting is on the wall. So this is the great invitation right here. Um, so refer to his majesty's speech where he says, um, who can resist an invitation so full of compassion? Because this is the invitation right here. It also says that this was a new message of Yeshua. You understand? It was not the kingdom. What is kingdom? When we say kingdom, what is kingdom? Kingdom is government. It's governmental. And, and, and you know what's interesting, brothers and sisters and mothers, is that I want, I've been wanting to teach on, on um, how we can come out of this alien, you know, these alien names. You see, these alien names also rob us of our birthright. You know, so-called names that have been passed on from slave master, you know what I'm saying, and we still carry these, these false names and don't recognize in what sort of predicament that even puts us, you understand, know vis-a-vis law, because we don't know even what's in the so-called law. That's what we, we, we mentioned before um, the brothers vid. And let's just get that vid again. This is some of the background on it. Um, uh, yeah, we mentioned, we mentioned this right here. Um, you know, uh, this brother's video right here. Um, brother Taj Tariq Bay. It's a very, very, you know, very, very good video. You understand? We, we really highly recommend you check it out. And there's some other brothers and other ones out there putting out information on this, like these slave names.
that many of us have, they make us like a ward, you understand, make us a ward of the state. And 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 they rob us, you understand, of our birthright. You see, they rob us of our birthright. So these are more governmental issues, even when we talk about um, federation, Ethiopian World Federation. This is governmental. That, that means it's related to the kingdom. You understand? But then in the preamble, it points out, it's like they say a caveat, so to speak. It says, we, the black peoples of the world, in order to affect unity, to affect unity, to make unity real, solidarity, liberty, freedom, and self-determination, to secure justice and maintain the integrity of Ethiopia, which is our divine heritage. You know what the word says. We know we're Israelites. We know we're Hebrews. You understand? Um, God tells us, and history, our true story tells us, who we be as Hebrews, but one who say, well, what's the Ethiopia connection? Amos nine and seven. Now, now check the facts. You understand? Know and 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 do the math on that. Now, some folks might have like a monophic. Some would say, you know, some sort of, some sort of, um, um, uh, denial in a sense you know, in their hearts towards Ethiopia, you know, and that's just more ignorance. That's just really more so-called sinfulness. I mean, among many of I and I so-called peoples over here, you understand? Even the other day we was watching, um, what was that show, The View, we caught a clip of it, and it was talking about something and food or something like that, obesity or something like that, and and, 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 and the black woman, not, not Whoopi, but the other black woman, you, you know, um, she made some statement about Ethiopia, you know, like uh, send the food to Ethiopia, you know, because, oh, oh look, growing up, if she didn't finish a plate, you know, you know, some parents, if, they did, if the children didn't finish a plate, they would say, you know, they're starving children in Ethiopia. And then jo Jody Bearheart or whatever, she said something about China. You couldn't really catch it because there was a lot of, like, it seemed like noise around that particular time, you, you know. But even she was saying they usually say China, you know, because the old saying was, eat all your food because there's people starving in China. I recall hearing that growing up. But to see how this loss... NBC, Negro Black Colored, you understand, who has an alien or foreign name, who don't even know herself, you understand, she mentioned Ethiopia. So th that is part of the, the curse to make you hate yourself and deny yourself, you understand. Um, it's, part of that, it's part of the deception, but we'll touch on that for a moment. I'm just pointing out some... These are some of I and I instruments right here, and and we're gonna try to have more ones to get like copies of this. This is the Declaration of Human Rights, because you have to know your human rights. Didn't His Imperial Majesty teach on um and speak on human rights? You understand? Wasn't Ethiopia um as a corporate person or corporate woman in a sense? Wasn't she the first? Um, victim of, 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 of that global violation of, of her human rights during the invasion, the fascist invasion of Ethiopia and, and, and the martyrdom you know, of those in the, in, the, in the white robes and that garment of righteousness, just like Revelation says. So we see these things working, you know, working themselves out. So it's not really right now for I and I to speak on, the, um, on, on that particular matter more than to say we need to get into our get in our proper person. We need to recognize the covenant, the Kal Kidan, you know what I'm saying? And and learn about what is a covenant. A covenant in, in modern parlance or language is a contractual agreement. Do you know contract law? You know what I'm saying? Do you really know contract law? Do you know what your birthright is? You understand, is have you declared your birthright? You understand, are you carrying um, European names? You understand, and denying your true Africanness or your true Ethiopian, you understand, names. I mean, I mean this, 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 is, this is very, very important, people. 
You know what I'm saying? This is very, very important. We're wondering, like, well, what's going on? How come more is not going on? And, and there's so much that we have to do, and corporately, collectively, but starting individually. You know what I'm saying? And these things are within our grasp. You know what I'm saying? Are within our grasp to do. So the come to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. As Matthew quotes that right there, he says, who can resist? So, so this right here is discipleship. This is what was called the new message of Yeshua, you understand, and which was not the kingdom because they had rejected him even from that early point in chapter here. We're in chapter 11, and it's interesting because chapter 11 in, in, in law is bankruptcy. You see, so in chapter 11, they, you know, Yeshua was rejected, and, and, and he predicts judgment. You can send a couple of verses before. So here, the come to me was a new message, which was not the kingdom, but it was personal discipleship. And this is, this is the message that's important for I and I as Ethiopian Hebrews, speaking, speaking nationally, you understand, and, and speaking racially. You understand, or one might say ethnically as Hebrews, but as Ethiopian Hebrews. Eovas, we could say as tribe of Judah, but we're not going to really touch on tribal in, 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 in that sense, but we're going to hold to what 9 and 7 of Amos says, aren't you like the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel, and the true lost sheep of the house of Israel, or the Beit Israel, are many of the so-called NBCs, Negroes, Blacks, and Coloreds those carrying European names, alien names, um, like the Smiths, the, the Jones, and the Johnsons. Those are of the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You know what I'm saying? We're not saying that all Negroes, blacks, and coloreds are. You know what I'm But amongst those people who were brought over here, were brought over here, the Beta Israel, the lost sheep, in fulfillment of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verses 15 to verse 68. And if you look at verse 68, where it speaks about they will go into Egypt by way of ships, and, 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 and then you think, wait, if you look at a map, they don't need ships. If it was speaking about physical Egypt in that sense, it was speaking prophetically, then you look on the back of the dollar bill, and you see that permit there, because that permit points to Egypt, you understand? So this is a spiritual Egypt, but in this spiritual Egypt, you understand, it is not our Egypt. You understand? It's, it's not the Egypt of, of Joseph's time. They don't, they don't know Joseph. You understand? They, they, they don't know Joseph. So let, let, us be, you know, let us be wise and keep our eyes on the prize. Now, Yeshua says this. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest to your souls. Verse 30, to complete the chapter, he says, For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. To say it's not a heavy, you know, it's not a heavy thing. You know, the burden is light. Now, what is Yeshua speaking about here? What is the main message, you know, what does the main message tell us Tell us here, this is all speaking about discipleship, brothers and sisters and mothers. It's speaking about discipleship. So let's clear this for a moment, though we want to probably return to this particular, you know, this particular teaching. So we're going to clear this, and we're going to come forward. So stay tuned, brothers and sisters. Shalom.